Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at Khan Academy, trigonometry, trigonometry of general triangles, and we're going to try the law of cosines. <coughs> Excuse me. So we go to the law of cosines. We'll try a couple of examples here. And first of all, let me just explain what the law of cosines uh, tells us. So the law of cosines, law of cosines. The law of cosines is, is helpful in many situations, but the idea is um, it's certainly applicable when you can't use the law of sines. That happens. So when can you use the law of cosines and not the law of sines? So pretend you have, let's say this is side A, so here's angle A, and here's angle B, so here's side B, here's angle C, so here's side C. What if I gave you all three sides? So the first case is and when you're given all three sides. In that case, you could not use the law of sines, right? The law of sines, law of sines, if you remember what that says, it says, it says that the sine of A over side A equals the sine of B over side B equals the sine of C over little c. So if you had C equals 5, A equals 6, and B equals 6, for example, and you plug that into this formula, you plug in 6 right here, you plug in 6 right here, and you plug in 5 right there, you can't solve this, right? Even if I said to you, find uh, angle A, so just angle A, if you try to relate this to this one right here, or this ratio right here, you're missing two variables. You can't solve it. You're missing angle A and B. You might have these two side lengths, but with two variables and one equation, you can't reach a solution. So the law of sines can't solve this problem, but the law of cosines can. So that's one scenario, and we'll go over what the law of cosines is in just a moment. The other scenario is when you have side angle side. So pretend I have um, uh, angle B, side B is six, side C is 5, but now we don't know that A is 6. But we know, let's say, that angle A is about 70 degrees. If I said to find the side length A, you can't do it, right? Um, or let's, sorry, let's do, if I said find angle C, you can't find side A, but let me show you with angle C. So let's say you want to find angle C. Law of sines can't solve this problem because if you have the sine of A, which is the sine of 70, over little a, which is unknown, and you equate that to the sine of C, which we don't know angle C, you want to find it to side C, which is 5, you can see there are two variables here, two unknowns. You can't solve this problem. Well, you say, Sean, then, then use what you know about side B, but you can't. You run into the same scenario. You don't know angle B right here. Now, if you had a second angle, you could figure out the third because every triangle is 180 degrees, but the law of sines falls short in these scenarios. So let's clear this off so you can see what the law of cosines will do. And then we'll try some problems. All right? So here's a generic triangle. Essentially, the cosine, law of cosines uh, is the Pythagorean theorem. So it basically says that a squared equals b squared plus c squared but we take away 2bc times the cosine of angle A. So this is essentially the Pythagorean theorem, and basically it also works for uh, right triangles and non-right triangles. The reason we can tell it's the Pythagorean theorem, and it works for right triangles, pretend for a second angle A is 90 degrees. What happens to this term right here? You would get 2bc times the cosine of 90. The cosine of 90, though, that is 0, and this whole term cancels out. So if you're dealing with a right angle, what you're left with is the Pythagorean theorem. However, what's nice about this formula, though, what's amazing, I should say, is that it extends beyond right triangles. Now, you might say, Sean, how do I use this? How do I? We'll, we'll look at that. How do I memorize it? Well, the next version of the formula starts with b squared, and, and the third version starts with c squared. So there are three common ways to write this. And the idea is you can just write it from different perspectives. So in the first perspective here, I would use this version of the formula if I'm focusing on angle A or side A. 
this version of the formula starts with b, so it implies I would use it when I'm trying to solve for side b. And instead of equaling b squared and c squared, it's a squared plus c squared. And whatever two letters I write here, I then subtract twice them, twice a and c, no square. And the cosine of the angle we're looking at is always the corresponding angle to the side that we start with. So it's the cosine of b. Then c squared is going to equal a squared plus b squared minus 2bc times the cosine of c. And in these examples, we're going to look at how to apply these formulas when we're either given three sides or side angle side. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's try that out. In the first scenario, notice here we're given side angle side. So this is a side angle side scenario. And what we are asked to find is side AB right here. And I'm going to call that little c because it's across from angle C. So that means that C squared is going to equal, let's write the formula out first, A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of C. Okay, so we're solving for C, right? So C squared equals A, so I'm gonna write this down, it usually helps, A is nine, B is 10, nope, that's backwards, see, I confused myself. This is why I write it down. Little side A is across from the angle A. Little side B is across from angle B. So now we do 10 squared. That's A squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times A times B. So 10 times 9 times the cosine of 52. Now to solve for C here, we're going to take the square root of all this stuff. So I'm gonna kind of cheat and copy it. And I like to um, use my calculator here when I can. So this is a great problem for the calculator, to plug it all in at once. So let's do that. And I encourage you to try it because plugging it all at once can save you quite a bit of time. So second square root, that's this button right here, of 10 to the power of two plus nine, and you can square it this way, minus two times 10 times nine, I don't need parentheses there, it's just the way I prefer to write it, times the cosine of 52, and make sure you press mode and check degrees, I'll do that right now. Yes, I'm in degree, okay, second quit. Now I hit enter, and I get my length. They want to the nearest 10th, so it's about 8.4, and here I put my answer, 8.4. So this is an example of side angle side. Notice the law of cosines can solve that scenario, right? Uh, the way the formula is set up, it can handle not knowing a second angle. Okay, let's go to another example. Here we have three sides. So this is a side, side, side example. All right, and we wanna know what the measurement of angle B equals. Okay, so that what does that mean? Well, we're going to focus on this version of this formula. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of angle B. Now, we could just plug in A, B, and C here and then solve for the cosine of B, but let me show you another version of this formula. You don't have to memorize it. If, if you do memorize it, it might save you time, I suppose, but the idea is we, we want to isolate the cosine of B and eventually isolate angle B because that's what they want us to know. So I'm gonna do that algebraically first. I'm gonna subtract a squared and c squared. So b squared minus a squared minus c squared equals what's left over, negative two ac times the cosine of b. <clears throat> and I'm trying to isolate the cosine of b, so I'm gonna divide both sides by negative two ac. So I get b squared minus a squared minus c squared. That whole thing, every part of it needs to be divided by negative two ac. And that equals the cosine of b. But we don't want to know what just the cosine of b. We, we want to know what angle b equals. So we take what's called the arc cosine of both sides, right? So in other words, take the inverse cosine of both sides. Take the inverse cosine of both sides of everything. So on the left-hand side, I have the inverse cosine of this whole thing. b squared minus a squared minus c squared over negative 2ac. And that's going to equal the inverse cosine of the cosine of b uh, you might know this, but these are inverse functions, so they cancel out. But you can just say 
uh, without even getting into the details of it, the inverse cosine of the cosine, they cancel, and all that's left is angle B. So angle B equals this thing right here. And all I did was condense all the steps you would do right, into a formula. If you started with this and plugged in A, B, and C, you'd have to do all these things. You have to subtract A squared and C squared, divide by negative 2AC, and then that, that would tell you what the cosine of B equals. But then you have to take the inverse cosine of that result, and that gets you the angle. But it's kind of fun to throw it all into one big formula here. So let's do that. So I press second cosine. Now I put parentheses because I want to establish my numerator here. It's b squared minus a squared minus c squared. So that's in our triangle, that's 9 squared. I should have labeled it, but it's okay. 9 squared minus 7 squared, which is a squared, minus c squared, which is 13 squared. Close parentheses, that's our numerator. Divided by, now make sure you put your denominator in parentheses as well, negative 2 times a, which is 7, times c, right, I'm just following the formula here, times c, which is 13, close parentheses for the denominator, close parentheses for the whole thing we're taking, and hit enter, and we get our angle. They wanted the nearest degree, so it's 41 degrees. And we are now done with this problem. So B is about 41 degrees. So just put a 41 up here. <clears throat> now, this is pretty much all they're going to throw at you, right? If you look at this situation, we have another side angle side. Okay, so I'm going to label that side angle side. And that means that C squared is going to equal A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. And all I did, I knew to use this version of the formula because they want to know what length AB equals. That's this length, and I'm calling it C because it's across from angle C. So C is going to end up equaling the square root, just like before, of all this stuff. We don't want to know C squared, we want C equals. So it's 10 squared, right? That's, here's A, little a. And here's little b, plus 11 squared minus 2 times A times B, 10 times 11 times the cosine of angle C, which is 46. Now I encourage you to try this out, try to simplify it in the calculator, you should get about 8.3 to the nearest tenth. And let's do one last one. So I encourage you again, pause it, try this out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. This is a side, side, side problem. They want to know a measurement angle B. So I'm going to write it from the, initially from the perspective of side B. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of angle B. And in the end, though, try to re-isolate angle B. You're going to get the inverse cosine of, just like it's actually the same as before, right? This is for angle B. It's going to equal b squared minus a squared minus c squared over negative 2ac. So take a moment, plug everything in, right? Assign it. We've got a is here, b is here, and c is here. If you plug all that in, we should get the same answer. It's about 35 degrees to the nearest degree. And that's pretty much it. So if you're dealing with side, 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 or side, angle, side, Use that law of cosines. It will help you to solve it. Thank you.